Liar is about a lot of things. It's about deceit, it's about what people perceive to be the truth, perhaps more importantly. It's about how sometimes it's hard to define what is objective and what isn't. I was gonna call a cab, but my battery's died. Oh, it's me. Oh, no, it's not a line, I swear. <laughs> when we first meet Laura, she's a modern, intelligent woman, and she's somebody that really knows her own mind. Then, through events in the story, she spirals out of control, really. Her character becomes a little bit more complex. You're drunk and you're embarrassing. Shut up! Andrew is a very driven personality. What he wants, he gets, and he uses his charm and his intelligence and his personality to achieve that. Andrew Earlham. We have a warrant to search your house. Arrest? What are you talking about? When Andrew's accused of being a liar, it offends him greatly. And the idea and the notion that he's been called out for something that he's denying completely, I think, really makes him angry. Your whole life, everything you've ever done, is all going to come out now. Katie's gut instinct is to believe her sister. She loves her sister, she knows her sister. However, she's torn because she also has a very good working relationship with Andrew. She set them up on the date in the first place, which puts her in a very difficult situation. And it's hard for her to believe that there is a dark side to this man that she likes and respects. So I think she is pulled in two directions. You have to answer for what you've done. What do you mean answer for what I've done? I haven't done anything. All the characters have lies that they tell at some point. Laura and Andrew, we are both convinced of our truth. The show rests entirely in large part, who do you believe? I'm sure it happened exactly like she said it did. Why would she lie about something like this? It's got a lot of elements to it, but fundamentally there's a really strong mystery element that pulls you through the episodes. It's a story about secrets. I also think it's a story almost about obsession. People feel moved, intrigued, wanting to know more and wanting to know the truth. It's just such a page turner. Edge of your seat stuff. It's going to test people's views and values and attitudes. Good characters are complicated and I think the lies we tell ourselves are sometimes the most interesting of all. Guys, I mean, I think a lot of people are familiar with The Missing and uh, the work that you did there. I mean, obviously, you guys don't like light subject matters. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about this, how this came to be, this show. Uh, yeah, this actually came off... We, we decided to do this after The Missing, which obviously there's lots of timelines, multiple perspectives, very quite a complex narrative. And I think usually in shows like that, you've got a long kind of list of suspects to choose from. And I think with this one, we kind of thought, let's do something a bit more linear, I mean, it's not completely linear, but, uh, you know, but rather than a list of suspects at the end, you sort of have to decide which one it might be. The idea of having a kind of binary choice at the heart of it, these two characters, you know, going at it and just trying to figure out which one of them is lying just felt like an interesting thing to explore. Yeah. I mean, has, what's the writing process like for you guys? Are you guys texting each other? Are you guys waking up, calling, I have a great idea? Or We don't talk anymore, <laughs> do we? We don't look at each other. No. <laughs> it's painful. Uh, what is it like? I, it's just, I suppose, it's like uh, just talking a lot, really. I suppose it's just endlessly challenging assumptions and trying to think, what will the audience be expecting? What's this character's thinking? What's their motivation? And the kind of questions you ask when you watch... Uh, any television programme, we ask each other all the time, and eventually the story kind of emerges after a lot of backbreaking Yeah, and chats. just backbreaking chat, sort of interrogating the story and seeing if it holds up and exploring all the avenues you can go down and hopefully landing on one that we can both agree on or that works, yeah. and then dividing up and writing it separately. Yeah. And how, how does that match up with what we see on the screen at this point? You know, obviously it's been, it's been brewing for a little bit now. Uh, it, yeah, it's an it's an it's an alive thing. So it always changes, you know. When certainly when you know bring Joe and Yo uh, on board, <clears throat> and you hear the words in their mouths, it, you have to rewrite to suit things. And there are little nuances in performance that you know change the the, the thing as it evolves. Uh, and then in the edit again, so you have to constantly rewrite and sort of reimagine how it's going to play. You know. Yeah. Uh, Joanne, I mean, what did you think about the character of Laura from the get go? I mean, when you're reading it on the page. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, um, I, you know, it, it sort of comes down to script first for me. And um, the, all I'd read was the first episode when I first got approached about doing the project. Um, and it was absolutely the whole 
episode really that got me completely hooked. The first time I met with James Strong, our first block director, my first question was, who is it? Who is telling the truth? And, and I was really surprised at my thought process about you know, Jack and Harry's script and how I felt like Jack and Harry had approached it from such an, the subject matter from such an original angle and something I'd never seen before. Yeah. Um, so that's what sort of hooked me in to start with. And then I loved the fact that Laura is just so determined and she's flawed. She doesn't make the right decisions. She is so um, confident in her own mindset, almost to her, you know, sort of, you know, on a, almost to, in a bad way, because she just will not be driven from what she feels is is right. Um, so it was it was really interesting to play somebody so determined. Is it tough to know now who did it and uh, walk around the streets? And I mean, I, I'm so curious. I want to ask you right now. Yes, it is. Because we've had two episodes of Aired in England already, so I've had so many people coming up to me and going, tell me, no, don't tell me, don't tell me, oh, tell me. So I'm conflicted, like, yeah, family, you. I'm yeah. sure, are they wondering? Yes, yeah, everybody's wondering, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I, I mean, the character is obviously so nuanced, like you mentioned. I mean, obviously, you know, sexual misconduct, rape, these are very sensitive issues. I mean, what did you do any sort of research? Did you read any sort of stories on these cases, um, things like this? Uh, yeah, I, I think what you have to do, because it's sort of difficult for me to explain sort of exactly what I researched, because it sort of gives away the story. But um, I did, I approached Laura in, so the, do it. in the same way. <laughs> yeah, so I'll tell you. Yeah, I approached Laura in the same right way um, that I do any character that's sort of complex or in a complex situation. Obviously, my character accuses Andrew of, of sexually assaulting her. Um, and... Ultimately, you just some characters sort of come very easily, and some characters are more psychologically uh, psychologically complex. Mm -hmm. So you have to work out why they behave in the way that they behave, and give yourself a reason for that person's personality mm -hmm. um, to do the things they do. So um, I did speak to a counselor, but it was more to do with working out her behaviour, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. I mean, these stories have definitely played out in the news. I mean, did. Was there a, a bouncing off point for you guys? Was there any sort of actual cases that you studied? I wouldn't say there was any specific case, but certainly as we were writing it, we were just struck by the frequency of these kinds of cases. Mm. And I think as we first had the idea, we were sort of struck by how often you read about this in the news even now. And so, yeah, without ever taking in sort of a specific inspiration, it's just it's very present, it's a very real issue. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we obviously, like, like Joanne did, you know, when you're writing these things, you've got to do your research and talk to the right people and you know, know as much as you can about it to, to write it accurately and truthfully, and that was our main goal. So um, no, no specific case, but I think in a way they all inform what goes on here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, did any of the characters change or evolve once you had the, the storyline and then people started coming attached? Did you hear something, you know, maybe we should do this with Andrew or this with Laura. Were there any things that were evolving as the, as the filming was process? In terms of the main story, no, we sort of, uh, we actually had locked that down very, fairly early in the process. I think we do, did that with, do that with all our shows, actually, is very early on. We kind of know the bones of how the thing's going to work. Mm. Um, so the main points, but certainly little things, as I said before, you know, nuances and... Uh, when you see the person playing the character, you know, you will make little changes and adjustments uh, to, to kind of make it the best it can be. Because who you believe at which point is just integral to a large part of the show. And, you know, the extent to which we can at least try and control that or make sure we're representing both characters from their own points of view as best we can is interesting. So, yeah, in the script and in the shooting and in the editing to go, what do we think people are going to be believing at this point? Who is telling the truth and how do we encourage people along certain lines of thought. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, Joanne, I mean, when you're working with Johan, I mean, obviously, that first episode, there's a little friendliness, but then it's all animosity. It's all accusations. I and mean, what was the process getting to know him and working with him? Um, it was it was honestly very, very easy. Johan is um, a brilliant actor and such a generous person and just great to work with. Um, we just clicked straight away. It was it was brilliant. We um, both were so excited about doing the project and felt really passionate about it and really passionate about getting it right and getting the the, the, the levels right of the performances and and um, so we just both approached it in the same way and it was just it was great. It was just lovely. 
I couldn't have wished for a, for a better. So you were able poster. to drop the animosity as soon as yeah, the camera's yeah, cut. Yeah. You weren't screaming at him. No, no, no. Go to my trailer. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, when did you guys first meet? Was there a table read? Was that the first time, or you had you guys cross no, paths? No, we before? met um, when we both knew we were going to do the job. We were both in LA because Joan lives there, and um, I was there at the time. So we met for lunch uh, just so we'd sort of broken the ice, said hello, had a chat about the project before we started rehearsal. So as soon as we'd done that, I was like, oh, brilliant. Okay, mm. we know we're on the same page. We mm. can go in, sort of, you know. Having having broken down those boundaries, so yeah, it was a very easy process. It, is the set as as tense as the show is? Because the show at, at all times you're holding onto your chair, you're sort of uh, squeezing hard. Yeah, sometimes sometimes it has to be because yeah. you have to get you know the, the the truth of the performance is the most important thing for me, and and you have to play the intensity if, if that's what it, if that's what you should be doing. So, um, yeah, there's moments where it does have to be tense and you do have to, to keep that energy. Um, and then when you don't, you have to let that go and, you know, sort of ha smile and go home and sort of, you know, leave that at work. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I'm enjoying the work that you guys are doing so much. When did you guys start to work together? I'd love to hear that story. Bef uh, when did we start writing? Start writing together, collaborating, and uh, we, we had a band before we did this, which obviously talk about off, the band. You know, we're still playing. Talk about uh, it. Uh, a song, I guys. Didn't know that. A song. <laughs> we did. We you got didn't know that. several albums. Uh, that didn't work out. Uh, and then we did comedy and resurgence right here. Out. You know, <laughs> yeah. come back. No to one needs that, man. Yeah. No one uh, needs that. No, we started so after the band failed and fell apart, and we didn't talk for several uh, weeks. We uh, we decided like to write oasis. comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we did comedy for about eight years, and then that didn't work out, and then we started doing drama. So we, it's taken Wouldn't a while. Imagine to end up here. comedy, but I guess I guess it, you're sort of it, you're you're, you know, you're analyzing human behavior, that same sort of thing. You're getting those cues. Is it, was that a natural transition for you guys? Yeah, I don't think. I suppose we when we wrote comedy, we always found the story, the characters that we loved that bit and trying to work out what makes this person funny or why are they specific or why are they memorable or you know reveal something about people we know it's just the jokes bit we didn't get we weren't funny <laughs> I don't know and when you're in your 20s guys laugh come on he yeah. just said it come on they, and they're very in, funny in real life they're very so funny exactly. case in point by the way um, but I guess in your 20s you just want to make people laugh we kind of fell into it and we realised that we were watching dramas mm. exclusively and we just thought why are we doing this let's let's write the thing that we love mm. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a big leap and it's a bit more exposing in some ways because you feel you've actually got to deal with sincerity and real mm. human emotion behaviour. So we wrote uh, the script for The Missing and didn't send it to anyone except our agent and said, please tell us if this is the worst thing you've ever read or like teenage poetry. But fortunately, he didn't think that. So. But a lot of the disciplines that were in comedy, you know, we apply to, to the drama that we write, you know, structure and narrative, they're all, they're all applicable. Mm. Uh, and we learnt a lot definitely from doing that, I think. I mean, you mentioned it. You mentioned how the show's airing already in, in Europe. Um, tell me a little bit about how that British TV sense versus the American TV sense. I'm sure that's been interesting to sort of observe. Um, yeah, because I, I was asked a question, you know, because um, obviously it's a sensitive subject matter, and um, uh, it, but ultimately it's a thriller and a piece of entertainment. And someone asked me, oh, you know, what, uh, how do you feel about a thriller being based around the, you know, the subject of rape? And I said, well, I think that's, you know, why is that still taboo? You know, we accept a thriller about a child abduction or um, paedophilia or a murder, so, you know, the same level of serious crime. And why why is this still taboo, a taboo subject? So there's been some people sort of, uh, you know, questioning that side of things. And, but ultimately, in terms of how it's gone down as a show, it's just gone down a storm, hasn't it? It's yeah, been... Um, yeah, it's Yeah, fantastic. it's been amazing. Everyone's sort of second-guessing um, what's going to happen and how it's going to turn out. And Social media is probably on fire right now. You're getting blown up, all of that. Who is it? Who, you know, people are making accusations, that yeah, sort of absolutely. thing. Yeah, absolutely. I've loved actually watching um, the social media comments. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been amazing. great, yeah. Tweet at her, guys, you know, give your guesses um tell me i mean social media is actually in the show as well that 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 matter of just you know going with your gut posting something and how that can affect somebody's life is obviously very intense i mean was that something you guys had in from the beginning or is that something that it's a bit of a commentary on where we're at right now where yeah. people are i think that was our feeling with it that this is subject matter that's in some ways familiar but in some ways timeless and actually to treat it in a very modern context and try and approach it from what does this story look like in the 21st century and the idea of, yeah, the kangaroo court of social media just feels so omnipresent that to not address it would almost be worse in some way. So, yeah, and it's crucial to the story going forward. It's crucial to tell you about Laura's character and Andrew's character. Yeah, it, it was really interesting that and it does change the dynamic quite a lot in episode two in an interesting way, I think. 
What did you think about in the script at the character of Laura, her decision to do something like that? What were your, what were your, obviously you don't want to judge her, you're playing her, but. Yeah, like I said, there was definitely um, sort of elements of the character's behavior that um, I had to work out reasons for. Um, again, I can't fully answer the question because it sort of gives away the story, but. Um, do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get it out of you eventually. We're going to get there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, either way, you know, um, however our story turns out, it's, it's a silly thing to do because she can, you know, she can completely ruin any, mm. any legal case that she has by doing that. You can understand um, from her point of view in the first episode why she feels the need to do something, um, but it's not, it's not the right way to go about it, yeah. Well, I think it's quite interesting, yeah, because both Laura and Andrew are very active, you know, quite alpha personalities who don't back down, who don't take no for an answer, who just, you know, do what they do. And I think that tells you a lot about this character, that she's someone who isn't going to sit around and wait for things, mm. you know, to happen. She's always going to take control, even if it's not the most sensible route. It's what she's going to do, which I think is quite helpful for her. Mm. I mean, Joanne, obviously everybody loved your work in uh, Downton Abbey. I mean, there was no social media in that, for sure. Is it, is, is it cool to sort of play this era versus... I mean, was that sort of a conscious decision to do something like this versus... Um, I mean, I just like doing things that are different, really. You know, it's sort of like that's the fun of being an actor, doing things that um, are different from the previous job. So, so I loved playing Anna Bates. I mean, she was a lovely character to be with for six years. But, um, but afterwards, I, I didn't want to play... Um, the lovely maid for a while, you know, I wanted to do something different. So, um, um, and I've been really fortunate, I've done lots of sort of different roles between sort of finishing Downton and doing Liar. But when I read Liar, I, I realized I'd never done a thriller either. So that really interested me. And it was so modern and edgy. I loved, obviously, you know, Jack and Harry's script was amazing. Then I met with James and the whole, the whole like team behind it really excited me as well. And I just thought, wow, this, I think this could be something really, really special. And Anna deals with some of the same issues, but obviously deals with Yeah, in a very that, different that's way. That's and that's because obviously it was a, a thought process. I thought, well, I w wasn't expecting myself to be a part of a show that's tackling the subject of sexual assault again. Um, but it was so, so soon. But it was, it would be four years in between those episodes airing on Downton and, and Liar coming out. And also I thought to myself, well, why do I feel uncomfortable about that? And why, why you know, I shouldn't feel uncomfortable about that. I've played a murderer three times. Why, why is this any You're different? You're not going to actually stab and anybody. Again, why yeah, am I yeah. feeling that this is a taboo thing and it really shouldn't be and isn't that part of the problem? Mm. So, um, yeah, so I... Um, and also the characters are so different because, as you said, they're in a different time. Laura um, and Anna are, are sort of polar opposites in every way. The way they think, the time they live in, the way they respond, the situation, actually, as well, and the way they behave. So... I just thought, I can't see somebody else play this role because I'll never forgive myself <laughs> if I do. <laughs> um, I'd love to hear sort of having a mini series like this and, and getting to see an end to a story. Or, so, so we think, I mean, is, it, is that something you guys enjoy? Is it something you enjoy working in a very uh, specific uh, amount of episodes? Yeah. We're sort of always led by the story, really. It's sort of what's appropriate for these characters and you never force a thing to extend beyond that, you know, the natural length of that story or even to tighten against it. You know, I think it's the story comes first and you just got to sort of honour that. Which is annoying because occasionally we go, why didn't we create something that would run It'd be the so much easier, years? yeah. I'd really want to going to that. missing the missing season eight right now, guys. Come on. Coming, so, that'd be so much easier. Sometimes you think. Um, but you kind of go, no, you've got to end where the story tells you. It's got to be good. It can't it's be, be good. Yeah. Did you guys have a specific amount? Were you six episodes, that's, that's what we're going to do? Or is it, this is the storyline, what what's the right amount of time? Yeah, I think we did. As we, whenever we, you know, talk about the pilot script and the issues in it, we would start going, where might it go, and kind of break it down. And just six just felt like a natural. It tells all the story we want to tell. You never have to. You never have to have episodes where you're kind of stringing it out and you're going, this is the one where they lose their car keys. You always want every episode to be as intense <laughs> and tense. Although there is one when she loses her car keys, which yeah, is very it's exciting. It's not good. Um, it was my favourite piece yeah. of writing for you. Babe. She's very good in it. She looks very upset <laughs> to lose her car keys. You guys have to do a comedy next. I'm loving this. Okay. God no. <laughs> you can watch them. They're uh, they're out there somewhere, but they're not good. Um, Joanne, did you like the fact that there was six episodes and you can move on to the next thing? I mean, is that something that appealed to you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and also it's, I mean, television's, you know, we're in such an amazing place, uh, sort of the golden age of TV again at the moment, which is great. And, and I hate, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm about to use the expression that everyone uses. It's like a six hour movie, you know, but it really is because... It, is, it actually is. Yeah. I mean, it's shot so well, it looks so great. The acting is obviously... 
thanks. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so, it, you know, it's, it's amazing to get, you know, you've got more screen time to um, tell this story and, and to sort of um, create these characters and, and go on that journey. And, and your character has such an arc because it's six hours worth of arc as opposed to a movie which is, say, two hours tops. Or So um, it's, there's something very exciting about that and being able to sort of stick with that that story for, for such a, you know, such a length of time. Mm. Would you come back and play Laura again if there was a sequel? We don't, we don't know what's going to happen, but... I might too, yes. Yeah, no, I would definitely, all yeah. Of course, yeah. It's all about or the money Anna, I mean, <laughs> I feel like your roles have been amazing. Is Anna another character you sort of, you'd feel okay coming back into? Yeah, of course, of course. I mean, there's obviously, you know, been a lot of talk of a movie. Mm. Um, we don't, I honestly have no idea about whether that's going to happen You haven't seen a script, not. okay. Uh, no, I haven't. I honestly haven't. Um, so, yeah, so who knows? But yeah, I mean, she, you know, she's a character that would be lovely to <laughs> pop back into the headspace of for a little while. What do people say to you when they see you on the street about that character the most, would you say? Um... Poor Anna is what I get most, yeah. They Poor see Anna. you like like yeah. a Charlie Brown walking down the yeah. streets or yeah. kicking a can. and. <laughs> yeah, Anna. yeah. So, um, But no, everyone's very kind. She was a well-loved character, which was lovely for me to play somebody like that. Yeah, the viewing party is obviously it took hold here as well. Um, what's next for you guys? I mean, what are you guys working on next? Do you have the next series? What are we working on, Harry? Uh, we are writing uh, a series for ITV and Amazon um, called The Widow. We're producing a show set in Hong Kong, which is filming shortly. We've got uh, another show called Fleabag going next year, uh, second series, and that's it, I think. Oh, that's you have too much at all, so you guys have nothing going on, is what you're saying. Things, probably, yeah, nothing, really. Just shooting in yeah. Hong Kong, you yeah. guys going to get out there? Come on. <laughs> exactly. yeah, we're going New out different the time November. zones there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about you, Joe? What's next for you? Um, I don't know, actually. Yeah, there's a few things that um, possibly may or may not happen that I can't talk about yet. Um, and talk about them. Um, yeah. <laughs> I keep on trying to get out of you. I see what you're trying to do. Um, and I've Voice just set up um, a production company myself in England, so I'm trying to get... Um, What's it called? That's amazing. It's called Run After It. I yeah. Like it. So I like um, it. We're just, we've got two projects in the very early stages of development with two different production companies at home. So um, so that's exciting. I'm really enjoying um, getting. What kind that of shows started. are you trying to do? What kind of shows are you liking? To do um, right now? I'm not telling you yet. <laughs> I'm not getting anything out of you. This is the worst. <laughs> I'll tell you if, if and when we get one off the ground. I'll tell you. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have some questions out in the audience. So we're gonna throw out there. Right there. Hey guys. Um, so I was wondering uh, for this show, like, was there any scenes that you enjoyed shooting? And uh, for you, Joanne, um, my family and I are big fans of Downton Abbey. I was wondering you. if uh, if you and the cast ever considered doing like a reunion, maybe somewhere down the line. Um, yes, well, there is talk of the film movie. and the movie, and um, I, I think there's a lot of goodwill from all of us to to do it. But um, ultimately, uh, you know, there's a lot of people to get in the same place at the same time. Fans that need aren't to cry out the for it. on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Downton movie. But we do um, we do meet up personally, so we have our own little reunion. So we had one, we had dinner all together in January. We're having another one before Christmas. But sorry, that probably doesn't make you feel any better because <laughs> no one else is there. But but we're having a lovely but time. But we're all invited, right? <laughs> exactly, that's what you're saying. How about you guys? Um, uh, seems we enjoyed shooting. Um, it was all. It was all marvelous. miserable. Uh, no, it's, uh, I really like two-handers, you know, just uh, what we love about this show is it is Joanne and Johan um, and their performances. And any, the scenes with the two of them facing off are just uh, very exciting to watch because there's so much, you write stuff and then just, it, it, there's so much more to get out of those scenes and there's so much subtext to play and watching those come alive, like pretty much all of them, but there's, quite a few in um, the first block and there's a great one, episode five. I think any scene with the two of them, we were just loved watching. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Okay, next question. This question is for, this question is for Joanne. Uh, which is your favorite type of role to play since you've done so many and something else I also just thought of? What was it like working with Dame Maggie on Downton? Um, it was fantastic working with um, Dame Maggie. She is, um, I mean, she's just an icon. She's amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just sort of the thing you dream of, you know. So that was lovely. Um, and my favourite roles are, um, like I said, probably just something different from the last thing I've played. And I do like to play people that are complicated, I suppose. I'm not sure what that says about me, because I'm really not complicated. That's why I like to play people very different from myself. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think one of my favorite roles was actually playing a murderer, <laughs> probably, because it was, it was so sort of, I had to do so much research to try and sort of 
understand, you know, what sort of what goes on in the mind of a psychopath ultimately. And, and um, not that I'm, I'm sure I've, I don't fully understand, but it was interesting to, to do that research and I found it fascinating. So, yeah. Uh, one last question. Hi. Um, so you mentioned when you did research for this show that you saw how many cases there really were that had to do with assault. I was wondering with the creation of the show, do you think that it might help with awareness? I, you know, I think it becomes a conversation and certainly, you know, it does start a conversation it has in the UK, you know, after the episodes that have aired. And I think that's always a good thing to raise awareness and keep talking about these things. Um, and I think should be on the table uh, on drama, I think. Uh, so, yeah, ho hopefully it does. Yeah. And it has, as you say, yeah. in the UK. Yeah. And yeah, in the right way, because, um, you know, it's like part of the problem is, as I said, pe it's still a taboo subject. And um, the only way to make any changes is to educate people, educate ourselves and educate our younger people as to what constitutes consent, how to respect ourselves and other people. And when I read the script, I did think, wow, this is something that if you're sat next to somebody at home watching this on television, you will not be able to not talk about this. It will open up discussions in every living room of people that watch it. And ultimately, no matter how our story turns out, that's got to be a good thing, I think. It's a great thing. Um, so the show is Liar. It's on uh, Sundance on September 27th, correct? Thanks so much for being here, guys. Give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.